But now I want to talk about the practice we're going to do today because it's exemplary, I think. There's a reason why we created it, is to create an explicit we practice that also embodied other key aspects of integral dharma. And this practice is called Zen Relay Noting. Okay, and so uh, Lisa Sherman and I worked on this together and actually it started popping up also in the Sangha from uh, other folks and other teachers. There was like little things about it popping up. So it was kind of wanting to emerge, which was like another lovely expression of practicing together as a we. It was just waiting to be created and it just happened to be that we finalized it and formed it. <laughs> um, so the description here is uh, Zen Relay Noting is a form of Zen Noting that is done in a deliberately interrelational manner. So Zen noting is another practice we do at Buddhist Geeks. Um, so we take the note handed to us by the previous person in the sequence, inhabit it, and then note our experience as it. I'm gonna give you examples here, but that's the super gist summary. So I'm gonna give instructions on this first, so you know what we're talking about. And then I'm gonna give a little context uh, of what this offers us in integral dharma. So um, for the instructions here, uh, we go in a sequential order um, and one person starts this relay with a there is note and it could be anything. There's freestyle here, okay? So um, it could be there is hearing. That's what number, uh, person number one just starts with a there is note. The next person takes the previous person's note and uses it in the Zen noting format as blank, there is blank. So here, as hearing, there is stillness, okay? Person number one, there is hearing. Person number two takes that note, as hearing, there is stillness. Then the next person takes that person's note and turns it into a Zen noting format. As stillness, there is expansion. And that continues in, in, until the session's done. So let me just read here this uh, an example round. Uh, there, person one, there is hearing. Person two, as hearing, there is stillness. Person three, as stillness, there is expansion. Person four, as expansion, there is spaciousness. Person one, as spaciousness, there is allowing. Person two, as allowing, there is letting go. Person three, as letting go, there is relaxation. So you can get the sense of the relay. Now, a couple of important things to go along with this practice, the safety release valve and the reset button. So in all social meditation, we have the safety release valve, which is basically pass. You can pass. If it's your turn, you can say pass, right? We also have the witness, right? So bring that in for sure to this is related. So a person can witness the practice rather than participating directly in the relay. But if you're in the relay, you always have the option to say pass, okay? But we added also another uh, option here, and that's the reset button. So this is basically like, if you don't want to take the previous person's note, you can press the reset button, or if we're talking about a relay, you can drop that baton and start a new one. You can use a fresh there is note, okay? Um, and we've done this because um, for a, at least three reasons. One, it prevents harm or trauma triggering. So like if the note is like a note that just doesn't feel good to take, you can drop it, okay? And that's in addition to just passing too. Um, it prevents the group from getting locked, you know, maybe into one experiential direction, you know, uh, uh, and then the other one is tech problems. So maybe you just couldn't hear the person before because of the microphone or whatever. You can start a fresh, press the reset button, use a fresh note. Okay. These are just three reasons. These are not the only reasons. Okay. Like you can use the reset button. It's there. You, you don't have to follow one of these reasons. Okay. Uh, but these are the three reasons that were important to us that we were like, okay, we need something else here. So, um, and it, so this is basically allows for an intentional reset of the direction of the noting chain. All right. So an example here, person one, there is pain. Person two, as pain, there is contraction. Person three, as, as contraction, there is claustrophobia. Person four presses the reset button. There is hearing. Uh, Person one is hearing their stillness. Person two has stillness, there's expansion, okay? So you can see, well, that person was like, I don't wanna really inhabit claustrophobia for whatever reason. So I'm gonna start a, a new chain, okay? Um, so uh, one thing here that's important, this happened actually more than once. 
you know, we don't have like a hard, like enforcing of rules around social meditation practice, but we, we have instructions here and suggestions. And one of those is that a person shouldn't ask the previous person to repeat their note. So we have the reset button for that. So if you don't hear them, it's interesting because there's a we practice and we want to hear the people, right? We're like, oh, what did you say? I didn't get to hear it. So that's really natural. But what's interesting here is because this is a relay, you know, the relay is always moving forward, right? Versus backwards and stopping. And when we note, we're noting in real time. And so if we didn't hear the person before, that note might have already passed for them, right? So they have to repeat a note that's not fresh for them anymore. Um, also maybe the tech problems are happening and it's just going to happen where it's like, oh, we can't hear me if we ask him to repeat. So just, we keep the chain moving. So you always have the option of pass or the reset button to start a fresh note. Okay. If you happen to forget and ask the person, you know, again, we don't hard enforcing the rules, but, uh, this has happened. So we just thought we'd <laughs> note about, note it now. So these are instructions. So I want to say a, a few things really quick about how this fits into integral Dharma. Um, so obviously it's explicitly we, or, you know, we are taking the previous person's note as part of our next note. Okay. Um, so there's an explicit acknowledgement and, uh, embracing of our interconnectedness there. We hear each other note. Uh, we know that our note will be taken and inhabited for the most part, you know, there's gonna be reset buttons and things like that. Um, we know another person will take our note inhabit it. We're going to take another person's note and inhabit that. Okay. Um, so all these things emphasize this, this we. There's also perspective taking here, which is really important in integral Dharma. We've talked about this, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, well, just in general about we being able to inhabit another person's experience or, or to imagine it is really important uh, for uh, the developmental uh, empathetic uh, line of development. Um, so even if it's not our experience in this moment, we hear that experience and we say, okay, I'm going to take that and inhabit it if it feels comfortable to do so. We're in increasing the flexibility of subject object boundaries. So this is really important development. We talked about this where, especially with mental structures, the, the filters that we're looking through to interpret the, the world and understand it, these are subject to us. And so when we're able to see them, right. And turn them to objects we disembed ourselves from these hidden structures that allow us to open up to deeper capacities of maturity, of understanding and of responding. So um, we're cycling between subject object a lot here, you know, hearing an object of a, of a note offered by another person, inhabiting it subjectively, offering another objective note, you know, uh, and this repeats. So there's a flexing and stretching of the subject object uh, uh, oscillation here. And, and again, as I mentioned earlier, there's an integration of autonomy and relationship here. So the form of practice is explicitly relational and we have safety release valve, witness option, the reset button. So it's very much integral in that sense. Last, I just wanna mention that the questions that come up that is really interesting. It's come and all the times we've tried this, there's these questions that come up. It really brings up in an embodied way certain questions, uh, especially relationally. Um, so in this practice, we're gonna it's natural to have a more of a of awareness of what's happening. Even in social meditation, we're usually we're hearing other people's notes, but there's even a little bit more attention to what's being said because we know we're gonna take a note. You know, we have a sense of this real time relay happening. And um, so, you know, uh, how does that feel? Rather than kind of like waiting until that moment right before a turn, we're, we're more attuned as it's happening. Um, what does it feel like when we're noting and being seen? That is, that's always happens in social meditation, but here it's even a little bit more because we know the next person is really listening, you know, for our note. Um, how do we take another person's note? This is question has come up when we practice this. Uh, do I inhabit it? I've been using that word. That's the word that fits the best when we describe the practice, but it's like, do we inhabit it? Do we let it sort of wash over us? Do we press the reset button? It's a question, you know, here, like that just comes up. Um, relational habits. What do I do with this person's note? How should I note? How is my note being received? What will be done with my note? 
You know, these are questions that come up. And um, the empathetic response, you know, what's this experience like for them? That can come up when we hear that note. We may think about that person. Um, what's it like to only listen and be present and not process? This is always comes up with social meditation. Often I hear people find it as a, a lovely experience that we get to feel intimacy practicing together, but we're not processing a lot of content. We're just being heard, right? We're being received by the space and, and, and the people we're practicing with. So these are all kinds of questions that I've experienced that I've heard when we've done this that are exemplary of what we talked about in Integral Dharma. In the end, like with all the social meditation practices, we follow the form and we see what happens. You know, there's no limitation on what we should or shouldn't experience in this. Okay, so with that, I think we're prepared enough to give this practice a try.